Today's a big day for us here in HPC Engineering because we're announcing a new service, the AWS Parallel Computing Service, or AWS PCS for short. Parallel Computing Service is a managed service that makes it easy to set up and manage HPC clusters and build scientific and engineering models at any scale on AWS. HPC isn't new in the cloud. We have a whole bunch of HPC specific instances, ultra clusters of GPUs, we have fast networking with EFA and luster that goes off the charts. But customers have told us that the act of managing HPC clusters means being a systems integrator. And that means worrying about everything that goes bump in the night, every security or or OS patch or update to the job scheduler that might have a knock-on effect that breaks something else. In some ways, that stuff should be easier to solve in the cloud because you can build everything using infrastructure as code, and it's just code. But the cloud isn't static. That's honestly one of the main reasons you're interested in it. New stuff. New CPUs, new GPUs, new silicon. But new stuff also means change, and with change comes systems integration again. So this is where PCS comes in. It's a managed service that takes your definition of what your cluster should look like and implements and manages it for you. But it also manages patching and OS updates quietly and without fuss so that you and your crew can get on with the job of solving big hard problems, not old boring ones. Best of all, it means that when we ship a new feature that solves a problem or retires some boring grunt work, you'll be able to use that feature immediately without needing to burn down your empire and rebuild it all again. Now, as you'd expect for AWS, it also means elastic pools of compute that expand and contract to match what's in your queues. It means visualization nodes that you can conjure up when you need them. And PCS integrates with loads of other AWS services so you can craft an environment that's as unique as your R&D teams are. Now, Matt Vaughan picks up the story for us today. He's been embedded with the team that built PCS and he knows the service probably too well. And he'll explain how it works. You're going to see a series of videos explaining different aspects of PCS here. There's a getting started tutorial video that's designed to walk you through some excellent online guides that the team put into the official documentation. There are more videos about different aspects of PCS to just help you understand how this thing works and how it plugs in. If you see a pop-up in your YouTube viewer here, it's telling you that there's a new version of the video you're watching right now. We expect PCS to grow new limbs and features pretty quickly, but YouTube doesn't have version control. So here we are bringing the 1980s to the world of video tutorials. We're pretty excited about what you're going to do with PCS. The customers we work backwards from told us they loved it and that it's what they've been waiting for from the cloud community for some years. We hope you dig it too. So to start, let's consider your existing applications and your job scripts. You've invested all this time and effort into developing them, and of course they work. Well, ideally, they'd work in the cloud the same as they do in your data center, but of course, <laughs> that's not always the case. Now next, there's a whole lot of tools that you can use to connect traditional HPC technologies with cloud-native ones. But here's the challenge. The cloud providers are constantly evolving. They release new services, new capabilities, and they update their APIs. And on the cluster side, critical bits like the job scheduler get regular updates too. Well, who's responsible for keeping all these parts in sync? The thing is, it's not always clear, and that uncertainty can end up being a real pain point. So let's talk about another challenge that's familiar to anybody in IT, and that is keeping systems patched and up to date. So it's a constant juggling act. You finally get everything running smoothly, and then wham, this critical update drops, and suddenly you are racing against the clock to get everything patched. Now, this can be really tricky in a do-it-yourself cloud HPC setup, and we often see that with folks who spend a whole lot of effort getting their initial build out up and going, but then they struggle with the ongoing maintenance, and that's totally understandable because things often work a little bit differently in the cloud and they're still learning. But unfortunately, that doesn't help with the urgency in getting their systems up to date. Finally, when you're designing an HPC environment for the cloud, you're usually not just looking for raw compute power. You probably need some combination of high-performance storage, interactive workspaces, monitoring, cost controls, and so on. It can be really painstaking to set all that up individually and get it working together in this kind of comprehensive, holistic system, even for people with a lot of cloud experience. So you can use PCS for a wide range of applications. Everything from weather modeling to CAE to Monte Carlo simulations, genomic analysis, kind of those human in the loop workflows that are at the core of all the design and build, test, learn cycles inside your organization. In every case, your workloads benefit from PCS's built in support for HPC optimized instances, GPUs, 
low latency networking, and of course, AWS Custom Silicon. First, in a traditional Slurm HPC cluster, there's a server called the head node, and that hosts the scheduler. It manages jobs, it schedules them on specific nodes, and it enforces usage limits. But if the head node becomes unresponsive, the whole cluster can fail. This can happen because the users have overloaded it, there's a hardware failure, or there's just some random software issue that took it down. So PCS helps with this by hosting your scheduler and AWS managed infrastructure. It gives you a stable network address where you can submit and manage jobs. PCS keeps the scheduler and the instance that it runs on up and running, and that lets you focus on running jobs. The scheduler manages the nodes in the cluster. It runs health checks, it puts jobs on the nodes to run them, and a whole bunch of other stuff. In a cloud environment, that usually means that it owns the code for launching, configuring, and shutting down instances. Well, it turns out this is hard to do well. And when you do it, it puts extra load on the scheduler, and all that code has to be kept up to date with the latest offerings from the cloud. PCS helps quite a bit here, because it handles all that scaling and management as a core part of the service. With PCS, you can have static or dynamic capacity that scales efficiently and cost-effectively based on demand. PCS also helps you use cost-saving tools like spot instances or capacity management tools like reservations, all with just a couple of clicks in the console. The most important thing here is that PCS is a native service, so it can quickly support new instance types and AWS features. Imagine hearing about a new instance type coming out. You go to your PCS console, click a few things, add it to your cluster, and the same day, you have access to the instance. That's what we're talking about. Now let's discuss patching and maintenance. So the scheduler is a privileged process, and it accepts work from unprivileged users, and they might be coming in from the public internet. That means that security needs to be airtight. So when there's a security issue, you want to fix it right away. Also, there's just sometimes good old fashioned scheduler bugs, and if one is impacting you, you want to deploy that fix as soon as you can. Well, the thing is in a do-it-yourself configuration, you're the one responsible for keeping up to date with the latest patches, having a testing and a rollout scheme, having a rollback strategy in case things go off the rails, and so on. Well, PCS helps handle this for you. A PCS cluster head node is automatically kept up to date with security patches and any minor scheduler releases with little or no downtime. For the scheduler, the patch releases are applied automatically, and you decide when to upgrade the major version. PCS also makes it really straightforward to set up automated updates to your compute node AMIs so they can be up to date too. We'll cover that in another video. Building complex HPC environments. So as I mentioned, you usually need more than just compute cycles. What if you wanted to launch an ephemeral cluster with a Lustre file system just to process today's data release, tearing it down after the job's done? What if you want to wire up your cluster to Active Directory so your users can use their corporate credentials to log in? Or what if you want to give every research group their own S3 bucket they can access from their HPC jobs? Or what if you want a fleet of virtual desktops that all can access a shared HPC cluster for modeling, simulation, analysis, and importantly, collaboration. So as you can imagine, it can get really complicated to manage all the resources. It can be hard to enforce change control, set up secret sharing, distribute certificates, secure the networking, and so on. And this is especially the case if you're cobbling together a solution from third-party management tools. Well, with PCS, you build and manage your cluster with familiar AWS interfaces like the console, the CLI, and the SDK. And importantly, PCS works seamlessly with dozens of AWS services, and that helps you build sophisticated HPC systems using infrastructure as code. But because PCS is a native service that builds on AWS primitives, you can easily manage all of this within the context of your broader AWS environment. So whether you're a system administrator, a developer, an independent software vendor, or an end user, PCS is built with you in mind to help you create and operate managed, secure, scalable HPC clusters, incorporate HPC as a building block in your own solutions, and most importantly, it's built to help you focus on science and engineering impact rather than the underlying infrastructure. So we hope you'll give PCS a try. To help you do that, we're releasing a series of videos introducing you to AWS Parallel Computing Service, but also Keep an eye out for HPC blogs featuring PCS and for updates to the HPC recipes library. In every one of these channels, we're going to show you the basics, but we're also going to show off some really cool things that you can do with PCS. I personally can't wait to see what you're going to build.